Hello, welcome to Mzansi Oz Diary. My name is Connie. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. So today we're going back to that med bill, information and disinformation bill. The bill has gone to the lower house. It's now waiting to go to the upper house. Uh, the lower house is the house of representative. It's went through with the support of about five two senators, uh, the tools, um, you know, independent, um, House representative uh, and the Labour current government, which is the centre left uh, at the moment, looks very much extreme, radical left. Uh, with this bill, it's uh, shocking. I'm really shocked about it. Uh, with my background growing up um, during apartheid and the things that was going on around apartheid and people not being able to express themselves and the speech being cartel and yeah, that was really problematic during that time. And I just, it just shocked me that an Australian government would think about such a bill and put a bill like this and become Australia. And even have the guts to actually go through it and approve it and say, yeah, this bill is great. And really tap themselves in the back and pat themselves in the back and say, hey, we've done really good here. I... Of course, uh, this bill uh, would go through because Australia doesn't have a Bill of Rights. We just don't have, we we think we have a right of, of freedom of speech, but we have we don't have it because we don't have the protection, Bill of Rights protection in our constitution. So there is an implied freedom of speech in Australia, but it really is not an inherent right that you have of speech. Obviously, for both South Africa and Australia, the hate speech is um, it's an exemption to your freedom of speech. Uh, so you cannot be uh, putting things that are a very, a racially verifying certain groups of people that are harmful, that are really blatant, like we saw with that tweet of Pauline Hanson versus uh, Faruqi, that was just, uh, you know, being found to be crossing the line there around that. So I posted that video giving you a background of that law and how it came about. But it's just that, yeah, you see from that point, we already have certain laws in Australia that prevent hateful speech, things that people can post online, what not to do, the do's, the pros and cons of online social media um, that actually uh, penalise bad behaviour. But I would actually want you all to think about whether or not it should be really government should be focusing on more educating the citizen about social media because this is a really new thing and we all need to be on social media um giving people what is correct how to what are the things they can post online and also the the most important thing that i think each government should be thinking about should be thinking about uh, ensuring that education is very much critical, that things people are critical thinking uh, on themselves rather than being fed information. Because I think there's a lot of people here in Australia that people aren't really much crit critically thinking and they rely so much about information others are giving them that they actually should think about, okay, this information is here in front of me? What do I know about this? How can I actually think about it and find out whether this information is true or not true? Uh, it is not the role of government to actually protect me, to protect you from harmful stuff out there, but because we all have the same brain cells and the government should be thinking about the information, educating the public about the, the pros and cons of social media and educating the public about social media in general and not making social media is a bad thing. At the moment, it is absolutely horrendous for me to actually read this bill. This bill, actually, I was shocked. I put my submission um, a while ago and I did remind you guys that you should put your own submission, but the submission was, was really short as well. I think they made it intentional so that you all don't have the time to actually think about it, to putting any submission. 
I don't know. Anyway, with uh, this bill uh, has gone to the lower house now, the House of Representatives. Let's listen in to a couple of those representatives when they were talking about this bill. And I'll come back to have a chat and give you some final thought about this. And the, the big question that everyone's asking is, is that we understand the intent of this bill and everyone hates it when people are hurt, are hurt uh, by information that turns out not to be true. But the question is, is this bill going to alleviate those hurts? Will it eliminate it? And I would answer no to both questions. Because at the end of the day, Deputy Speaker, freedom of speech is a basic human right. And this legislation threatens that right. Now, I understand that maybe those out there who support this bill, as they see it as a way of protecting people from the information that may harm them. And look, sadly, that may happen, and it has happened, and it will continue to happen. But the reverse is also true. With the best intentions, information that first may have been thought to be harmful uh, turned out not to be harmful. And in some cases, it was later proven to actually be helpful. The role of government is, is really complex. As the balance of being too lax leads to harm, and being too constrictive, it also leads to harm. Legislation and laws are there to protect us as a society and as individuals. But just like as if we were to hold a, a raw egg, if you hold it too loose, you'll drop it and there'll be a mess. But, same thing, if you squeeze it too tight, there's going to be a mess. This proposed bill is an example of squeezing too tight, and if it's passed, it'll create a mess. Slowly but surely, this Labor government has been introducing and passing legislation where our freedoms are being eroded, all in the name of government control over our lives. Deputy Speaker, history tells us that when nations have gone down this path, there is a breaking point where their citizens say no more. Depending on the civilisation, the results have seen uh, revolutions and wars as people are just fed up. Fortunately, Deputy Speaker, in, de in a democracy such as Australia, governments are peacefully voted out without bloodshed. For, for, uh, for one, I am very grateful. So as you've heard there, when he said the freedom of speech is actually a basic human right, I just wanted to uh, talk about more for you all. So in Australia, there is an implied freedom test. So there is no Bill of Rights, like I said, the difference between Australia and South Africa in terms of their constitution uh, that enable the government to enact such a law like a met bill in South Africa this bill would never even be thought of because after the apartheid in it the new constitution in it there is a similar constitution as in America which protects the freedom of speech the bill of right is in chapter 12 of the constitution if I'm not sure about them quote me on that one but it does protect the South Africans that freedom of speech but it does have exclusion in it for hate speech okay so in australia the any bill must pass the implied freedom test so the implied freedom test it means that it the bill should not unreasonably restrict speech related to government politics or genuine public debate Okay, it must also be justifiable and proportional. There must be proportionality and justification forward for it. Okay, so the law would need to justify uh, its restrictions. Why they restricted uh, this? They're going to restrict publication of any uh, information on a digital platform to just the government, the media, the university, the elites of university and some artists. So what is the justification for restricting, for discriminating against all of us for putting out things like businesses, putting their own products online, uh, talking about the offering, what they offer so people know what, how to contact them, 
all of that all of that information if this bill becomes a law it, it's going to be subject to the whatever the platform because they wouldn't want to lose money because the government can go after them so they obviously going to put it's put a lot of extra burden to these companies and that's going to restrict their profit margins it's also going to restrict private sector private sector already in australia is already in recession anyway we know that they're not really growing as they should because of a lot of these red tapes that we're seeing actually in terms of uh allowing public sector to grow and be creative and more industry to come about to stimulate the economy so the government shouldn't be the only employer you know so yeah the must this law must really justify why it restricts there's this restriction is required is also must be said it also any restriction uh, it must serve a legitimate public interest okay such as public safety and it also must be able to apply uh only when it's necessary and must be proportionate necessary and proportionate so I just want to want you guys to be clear about the law that's going to go through Australian parliament how it's going to be looked at because there is no bill of rights okay in australia there is none there's no bill of rights in the australian constitution so the to amend it will be so difficult to amend it because you need double. So that means you need a double majority uh, for voters to in a referendum to change it. You also need a uh, two out of you know um, six out of two um, sorry to get it. I know that you need double majority. So that means the the states uh, four out of six states must be able to. Um, say yes and also there must be the majority of the public agreeing to it to be able that referendum to be able to change it just like just like we changed the referendum of same-sex marriages many years ago you sort of need that to be able to change it's actually been so difficult to change it so we had our own referendum a while ago just not last year actually in october about the voice for a referendum that failed it was failed referendum. So this government, because they failed that referendum, now they're putting a lot of restriction to the speech, freedom of speech, because they uh, thought that a lot of information that led to the failed votes was due to what was um, posted elsewhere in the, you know, social medias and so on that led to the failed voice. So, and a lot of uh, examples overseas that are not relevant to Australia. So there's a lot of reason why they they put, they thought that putting this bill would be actually a good idea for them. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It is yeah. So as you've listened, it is definitely. Not a good one from not from creativity business for just people wanting to come out and voice their displeasure about things that they see around them and expressing their thoughts online that are not in a way threatening anyone else. Um, yeah, it's going to make it harder for you all just to listen to how people it's been so great to see how people express themselves online and actually even learning things from other people and other profession because they wouldn't be able to do it there was the only people who are exempt from this law are, it's government it is media mainstream corporate media it is the artist is also people from university because they are the smart one according to the labor government because we are idiots we just don't have good brain to critically think to determine what is true or what is not true for ourselves so we need them they say that says labor yeah is this name okay yeah it is actually not up to the government via ACMA to decide or dictate what the truth actually is and I'm proud that we, the coalition, oppose this draconian legislation and will repeal it in government. Because freedom of speech is an absolute fundamental to our democracy. By contrast, it is the clear intent of the Labor government to censor, silence, control, fine and punish Australians for our online content 
by imposing and enforcing obligations on digital platforms. This is the most anti-democratic, anti-free speech legislation I've seen since coming into this parliament in 2007. I actually never thought I'd see the day when in this country, a proud country which is globally acknowledged and highly respected as a liberal democratic society, that we would be debating a bill that is explicitly designed to censor and silence the Australian people, to deny us our freedom of speech and freedom of opinion, to deny Australians the, the right to frank and fearless, honest debates. We need to hear the views of people we disagree with. But what I believe that Labor is really doing is preventing anyone who disagrees with the government from having their say, especially in the run to the election. The government will control what we read, see, hear and share online in the election campaign via ACMA. Labor is seeking to directly prevent anyone who disagrees with the government from having their say. A bill that strikes at the very heart of free speech. This is the key pillar of Australia's hard fought for and protected democratic freedoms and liberties. You know, over 103,000 Australian servicemen and women have fought and died for our democratic values. One of those was my sister's dad, my mother's husband, who was killed in Papua New Guinea in World War II. They fought to protect and preserve our healthy, functioning democracy, a democracy that not only requires but should demand freedom of speech. We're a diversity of ideas, views and opinions right across the ideological and political spectrum are encouraged, openly discussed, both agreed with and disagreed with. However, the Labor government has decided to deliberately silence its own citizens, to legally enforce and silence debate designed to shut down debate on issues that matter to Australians and to deny us from the right to informed choice. Our informed choice will only be what the government approves of. This bill will deliberately suppress and remove online debate by Australians. Um, unfortunately, once again, Labor is determined to divide us as they tried to do with The Voice. This time, however, Labor is dividing us by the chosen ones who will have the right to freedom of speech online and those of us who will not have the right to freedom of speech online. Labor's special chosen ones, those who will have the right to freedom of speech, no matter what they say, will be academics, scientists, artists, the people who Labor, Labor clearly believe have a superior intellect and intelligence to the rest of us. Labor's chosen ones will have the right to free speech on key and critical issues that matter to all Australians, even if it is misinformation uh, and disinformation around critical political health, social, economic and every other issue. Imagine not being able to disagree online about budget decisions, climate policies, Labor's renewables only energy policy, women's safe spaces and anything else in fact. Those of us who are not the chosen ones will be bound by Labor's broad definitions of misinformation and disinformation enforced by ACMA, Labor's Truth Police Unit. Misinformation which is described as information that is reasonably verifiable as false, misleading or deceptive. Disinformation has the same definition but also adds the content with grounds to suspect the person is sharing it intends that the content deceive or it involves inauthentic behaviour. Well, good luck with that. The rules for this will be dictated by whatever the government and its Truth Police ACMA dictate. Gone will be our right to share our genuinely and honestly held opinions through frank and fearless discussion and open access to the great contest and ideas and diversity of opinions online. For practical purposes, the Gaiba government will direct and empower ACMA to force online platforms to remove content before Australians are actually allowed to see the content. Can you just imagine how the Chinese government will be rubbing its hands at the opportunity it will have to instruct TikTok to remove massive amounts of Australians' legitimate content online? That will be content that the Chinese government doesn't approve of. It will be removed under the protection 
provided by this Labor legislation to curate China's own message or propaganda. And we will never know exactly what the Chinese government has removed because it will be gone before we see it. It's madness. And we will see the major American platforms controlling and removing Australians' content online, outsourced probably to fact-checkers like the discredited, politically biased RMIT fact-check. We will not be allowed to see, hear, read or share alternative views and opinions online. The online platforms will be forced by law to remove any of this before we're even allowed to see it. Now, I have great respect for Chris Merritt, the Vice President of the Rule of Law Institute of Australia, who said good law must be clear and certain with requirements that are capable of being known in advance, not determined by officials. He also said one of the fundamental features of Australia's system of government is that everyone has a responsibility to make their own assessments about public policy debates. That means accepting that part of the price of living in a free society is that flawed ideas should be free to circulate alongside those that are worthy. Telling the difference is the role of an informed citizenry, not governments and their officials. That's exactly what this government is trying to do. Make no mistake, this is complex and simply bad legislation. And we actually won't know what's been removed, what we're missing out on, because we won't see it at all. The platforms will have wiped it off before we see it. And we won't even know when ACMA, Labor's Truth Police, get it wrong, when they force platforms to remove information that later proves to be true. We won't even know what truthful original information was there, because we won't see it in the first place. I can't find any process or publication of removed information, no penalties or outcomes for the Truth Police, ACMA, when they get it wrong, which they will, or who or what will monitor, measure and report on ACMA's decisions? Who will adjudicate or decide that the government, ACMA, the platforms, the fact-checkers, have made a mistake in removing what is accurate information or that later evidence provides that it was true? Will those posts and comments be reinstated and fines repaid? Who will represent the rights of ordinary Australians in this instance? What will the penalties be for the removal of accurate information? Will there be damages paid to the individuals and all platforms affected? And who will pay and will it be Australian taxpayers? The legislation and definitions are so broad, you could, buy, you could drive what my family would call a D11 dozer through them. They're so wide-ranging, open-ended and subjective. Terms such as grounds to suspect, reasonably likely to cause or contribute to serious harm or the intention to deceive. Now, I couldn't find any definition or test for what actually constitutes reasonably verifiable or false, misleading or deceptive. <laughs> Simply put, the truth will be what the Labor government via ACMA says that it is. And you know what concerns me is Labor is also doing this because they think Australians are stupid that we are so stupid we can't work out for ourselves whether what we see, read, hear online is accurate, reasonable, or it is extreme and wrong. Now, I've done hundreds of cyber safety presentations to kids, and I ask the kids, how many of you believe that everything you read, see, and hear online is true? Very few uh, hands have ever gone up, no matter what the age group is. And I encourage the kids to develop their own critical thinking. But if kids understand this, why doesn't this current government? Why does the government think that we are really all so stupid we don't understand that not everything we read, see and hear online is true? OK, we don't have the common sense. I, that's what I think the government believes. Australia is a democracy, and that's something that I take very seriously. We actually have the right, the right of freedom of speech and to use, develop, um, uh, our own critical think thinking and judgment. That's part of our responsibility as adults, to decide and work out the difference between fact and fiction. We have the right to actively decide what games, platforms, apps, sites, digital technologies we use and which to stay away from. The importance of media and information literacy should be encouraged, not discouraged, by simply cowering behind and being controlled by ACMA or Labor's truth police, like zombies, who can't think and act for ourselves. 
who in fact uh, needs to have a big brother government on our shoulders every single minute of the day or whenever we're online. It is not up to the government to decide what the truth is. Um, but I am very concerned about this legislation. Um, it is not right um, that we only see what the government believes we have a right to see. I don't want to be living in a vacuum, a political vacuum or any other form of vacuum. I don't want to see anything designed to uh, suppress alternative political or other opinions or to filter out alternative views. I don't want to see anything designed to stop us disagreeing with the government of the day online. Um, Labor wants to make sure that any future referendum, unfortunately, they propose is probably never defeated again by a 60-40 majority by the Australian people by controlling what information we get to see. We will never see those alternative views online or the truth, again creating division in Australia. The chosen ones who can express all of their views online and the rest of us who cannot. Now, this is not okay that the Labor government is dividing us by those they think who are smart or intelligent enough to know what is accurate online, the media, the academics, the scientists, the artists, those involved in parody or satire. They actually must have all su have superior intelligence. These people can say what they like online, online right or wrong, whether it's Labor's definition of misinformation or disinformation, they can share it. Academics can have two opposing opinions, but Australians, ordinary Australians, can't discuss this online. So, if you're a neurosurgeon, a doctor, a pharmacist, a lawyer, a heavy-duty mechanic, a nurse, a teacher, a retail worker, an aged care or childcare worker, or so many others, who will have the right in there? But we are the ones, unfortunately, the Labor government believes that they can dictate what we can and can't read, see, hear or share online. Um, unfortunately, we will see Canberra-based bureaucrats setting up a totally new bureaucracy to actually police this. I take great exception to Australians' freedom of speech in any way, shape or form being compromised. And I don't want to see Australians living in an information bubble that is controlled by Canberra-based bureaucrats. So as you have heard from the two uh, parliamentarians, my concern with this bill is that the broader definition and the overreach. Um, so it was really the definition of what it is misinformation and disinformation is really broad in such a way that it could be, depending who you are, you can interpret it differently and come up with a different conclusion of it, is the broader definition of this. Uh, and it's really overreach. So overreach, broader definition, that's number one. Number two is this exemption. Why do you have exemption for certain people? So are these people the superpower? Are they the gods that we should all listen to? You know, why are they exemption for these people? Because we know even the government cannot get it right as well. We just had a, a very, um, well, hash up, whitewash of a COVID um, inquiry about what happened during the COVID. Uh, you know, it's just the government cannot always get it right. So... Who is going to punish the government? Who is going to say, you got it right, so therefore you must be put into a public court of opinion, be penalised for what, <laughs> at the time, you, you thought what the, you had was actually a true information. So what can be misinformation today, tomorrow can be actually the facts and truthful. So let's be really think about those things you need to think about that that's my opinion so you, you can think about other things as well i'll be happy to hear your comments as well and also just the burden burden of it all i mean even with a 16 year old uh burning of 16 year people who are less than 16 on social media platform that means we're going to have digital ids now on platform how are they going to check that someone is 16 who's online is more than 16 years old is 16 and above. 
what do you need to put in place to actually implement this policy? You know, you're going to need a, a actually a digital ID to do it. Yeah, what is it? And how are they going to protect this information, this platform, if you really have to now produce your identification information, who you are online, how are they going to store this information, how this information is this information going to be protected and be safe? That's another issue with that one is just separate. The one for 16, banning of the 16 year old. And that also has a really problem as well with it. I mean, it just takes away the parental uh, in, you know, responsibility as well there. It's got its own issues that I think put too much burden onto a private entity, private sectors. No wonder the private sector is not really growing in Australia. It's not really putting a lot of money to hire people because of these burden, too much red tapes. And then I think is effectiveness and accountability. So who's going to regulate this body? Who's going to say you were wrong? Who's going to say that? Who's going to have the final authority and have the superpower and maybe have more, be more intelligent than the AR? The super, even the most <laughs> good AR always get it wrong anyway if you know the pros and cons of using AR. So you should now know what is good about AR, what's not good about it. I mean, who is going to be the, the god of information? <laughs> this is crazy. It is so crazy. I, I couldn't believe this when I read this bill. I was shocked. Very shocked by it. So you go and download it and read. Okay? Please comment below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And have a lovely day. Bye for now.